Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to uh, just let you know of a response that I received from Sketchbox, but before going into that there were a couple things that I wanted to add in addition. Things that occurred prior to me getting this email that I received earlier today. Um, I People were asking me why Sketchbox hadn't commented like they had on their previous, uh, the previous videos or negative video that I had done, um, and they did comment, but I removed it. I felt that it was not only insulting to me, I felt like they were trying to take me down a few pegs on my own channel, and that um, they also were putting me down. They did, again, repeat that they, that I insulted them, um, which is their prerogative to say, but regardless, a business should never bring emotion into their responses to a customer. A customer can do whatever the heck they want to do, but a business is expected to act professionally all the time, um, and they, they're not able to do that, or so I think, but anyway... Um, they did leave comments, and then they said that they were only helping me to stop my subscription, which was not the case. And I can read those emails, but I think at this point um, it's time to move on. So I'm not going to read all of the emails. If somebody has a real problem with that, I can send you the emails, and you can read them yourself. But... Um, I want to move forward at this point, um, but the other thing I wanted to state that I was very upset about after I had posted my video was that customers or customer um, had received um, very unprofessional emails for canceling their subscriptions because they were my subscribers. They received emails uh, at least one person received an email that showed uh, that John had sent on his personal resume to, or partial resume, his qualifications, and his photo, and also pieces of my email put together um, to show what a horrible person I am, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But anyway, it was... It is so shocking that anyone at a company, especially the owner of a company, would ever send an email correspondence between customer and company onto a different customer and st state their defense when he never asked for any of it and just said he'd like to cancel his subscription without explanation. So... I found that very, very unprofessional. I don't think it was too shocking or surprising because I wouldn't put anything past this owner's emotions uh, playing into his business practice, which is really sad. And he was very upset that I called him young. Only a young person would be upset by that. You can be welcome to call me young anytime you want. I'd love it. But um, I feel that he's very unpracticed in his communication skills and um, that his age is in reflection of that. And I don't mean that as any disrespect to any young person. Everybody's maturity levels are at different, different levels. And maybe I should use the word maturity level rather than age. But I believe that his maturity level is very poor for this kind of, um, for the owner of a business. Um, not everybody can succeed as business owners, and if if he's unable to change his behavior in the future, then um, it's going to reflect really poorly on his business, and it will probably hurt him in the long run. That being said, I did block him from commenting on my YouTube channel any further because of his behavior, and I think that I honestly did him a favor by blocking him because had that comment stood on my channel, it would have reflected poorly for him as a business owner. And as a business owner, I think that it was, um, it should never have been there to begin with. Um, so anyway, 
Then this morning, I began going through my email, and I received an email from John. Um, I had sent him another email telling him how unhappy I was that he had sent portions of my email on to another customer trying to defend his actions for the way he treated me. Um, this customer was was offended enough to pass to forward the correspondence on to me. I don't know what John was thinking in doing that. But anyway, um, let's see here. Let me find this. I lost it. I'm going to pause you for one second while I find it. Okay, for some reason, I could not pull up any of the email messages on my iPad. Um, I had to go over to the main Gmail site in order to track them down. That's never happened to me before. But I will read them off of my computer. <clears throat> and I wanted to tell you that I did receive an apology of sorts from the owner of Sketchbox. Um, I believe that he really feels that this may have hurt his business, and it may have. Um, it's unfortunate, but you just don't treat customers with that kind of disrespect, regardless of how a customer acts. As a person who worked with hospital administration, um, I really received tons of hate, but I always had to be serious, keep my emotion out of it, and always respond with, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. Um, let's see what we can do together to resolve the situation. And if they didn't want to talk, then I would go above and get my, my superior to come talk with families or whatever. But you just don't bring emotion into it. So, excuse me, had to sip the coffee. Um, so I'm going to read to you the apology that I was sent. It says, Sharon, first off, I feel an apology is in order. I believe both sides of this discussion has gotten rather heated, and you're absolutely right. We want every customer to be happy. We learned a very difficult lesson here. We made an assumption that based on your emails, you didn't want to keep receiving boxes from us. We canceled your canceled on your behalf, he says again, in an attempt to save your renewal that would process on the first. That was my call to make, and I'm sorry for making it. I'm not going to act like your emails that call into question my age, qualifications, relations to my support staff, and commitment to my company haven't upset me. <laughs> Letting his emotion get into the apology. It's clear our conduct, conduct with you has also upset you as well. Well, of course, a business doesn't act that way. If there's anything we can do to mend the poor customer relationship with you within reason he has with ampersand around it please let us know please take this as a gesture of good faith we really like what we do and we want to know we're learning from this experience thanks john at sketchbox now there are a couple things that i feel as a business owner are wrong with this apology first of all he should never bring into light the customer's faults. And sure, I got angry. But as a customer, I can do that. I'm the customer. As a business owner, you can do that, but it's going to hurt you in the long run. You've got to keep your emotion out of it. Yet he brought it into play again in his apology. In my in my um, experience and education, and I taught many classes on communication skills for businesses, um, he should have stopped at the point when he, he said, I'm not going to act like your emails that call into question my age, da 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 haven't upset me. It's clear they have upset you as well. Why not just say, you know, I'm sorry um, for making that call, and what can we do to resolve the situation? Um, 
that would have been fine, but he still had to bring emotion into it, which I have a problem with. But hopefully he's learning a little bit, and I guess he can't learn com communication skills overnight, but maybe he had some help from an, his attorney or something, or if he has somebody in human relations or something like that at his company that he can get advice from, maybe that would have been what he should have done, and maybe he did. But then he embellished. I don't know. So this is my response to him. It's a rather long message, but I'm going through everything bit by bit. I said, um, it should never matter. I'm going to try and face you a little bit better here. It should never matter what a customer says, writes, etc. I've worked in hospital administration for many years dealing with very unhappy people who have lost loved ones and have been hit spit at, berated, and told they're going to have me fired for releasing patients early, etc. But I could never respond in the unprofessional manner that you and Tori have. You may have used the words on your behalf, but I didn't even receive that email until after reading what Tori had sent. Your last box is in rote. The unprofessionalism of your company is not just my complaint. I've been receiving messages from many unhappy customers telling me how happy they are that I took a stand against it. Some say they wouldn't have the nerve. Some think their YouTube channels will be shut down. This can't be done for giving an honest review of a company. You tell me that I, it got heated on both sides. Yes, it was, but again, it shouldn't matter if I tell you I don't like your qualifications or age or whatever. I'm the customer. I'm allowed to be that way. I'm allowed to be an idiot, if that's what I choose to be. That's something you'll have to learn, and hopefully you will in time. I was shocked at the very defensive response I got when I emailed about the drying Copic markers that I received a few months ago. I mentioned that you offered to replace the dry, the dry ones if I sent them back, of which I have to pay the shipping for your mistake. I was also told that in that email that you tested each and every marker before it left your hands and hands and if I sent them wait a minute I'm skipping a line I was told that told in that email that when you tested each and every that you tested each and every marker before it left your hands and did this to imply that I was lying or it seemed that it, it seemed that you did this to imply that I was lying or something or trying to get extra markers out of you to me and you guys know how I love markers to me if I owned the company it would have never gone that far I would have said I'm so sorry that our box was unsatisfactory this month we will send out a set of replacements to you today please accept our sincerest apology for the poor quality but nope Whichever one of you it was, again, became very defensive. I thought, why is a company acting this way? I was shocked then, but I didn't say anything negative even after you got defensive on my YouTube channel and were defending yourself. That was back on the Copic Marker review. I don't know if he's deleted it, but you can go see. I thought it was unprofessional and a desperate plea. It was odd to me. Um, I didn't write that in there, but I responded kindly again and told you how much I enjoyed your boxes and I posted it right on my channel. You can go back and see it unless he deleted his comment. So this is not a one time problem. You do have a lot to learn. I feel that stating you are young is beneficial in giving your company the chance to grow into some sense of professional business practice and communication skills of which you do not have. I feel you cannot control your temper. That is how I as a customer see you. I have followed up on the Tritone pencils and they are not artist quality. They are not even listed on the Koinor website as an artist pencil. They have little um, divisions. And if you go under artist pencils on Koinor, you will not find Tritone. They're under the hobby. They're hobby pencils. Um, they are considered a hobby pencil. And that is why I was disappointed in that box. I also received many emails that others felt the same. 
and that others also feel that the Tambo pencils that were in the basic box would have been a better fit for the premium box, yet that is a stretch. There were also many negative reviews and comments plastered all over YouTube. I also felt that giving us four black brush tip permanent and water-based markers and a water-based clean color brush marker, which was the only part I liked of this month's box, was overkill. What does a person need, why does a person need to receive four black Blush, brush tips, well that's a tongue twister, four black brush tips in the same box. All were the same except for one fine tip, and one or maybe two were water-based. It's odd even for marker artists to use water-based and alcohol-based markers together. Now I learned that from multiple marker artists who contacted me. Not someone that you'd know not something you would normally see, like using watercolor and oil paints together. It appeared to me that four black brush tip markers of very similar quality in a box of colored markers was done in order to get that premium price up to $35. This is my opinion. Just go out and look at the reviews. People were very unhappy. I just voiced the complaint. And as a customer again, it doesn't matter what I say. A company should always act professionally, even when the worst is being thrown at them. I got a page down here. Hang on a second. And again, I don't want to lose my place. Uh, la, 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 la. And again, in your apology email, you still reply unprofessionally, bringing up the problem you had with what I said about age, qualifications, etc., and I was saying it about you, not your support staff. I have no idea how old Tori is. I saw his photo. Um, all was true. I was sent your qualifications by two people. One from LinkedIn, where somebody sent a link on the comment section in the YouTube video. <clears throat> and, wait a minute, I lost my place. One from LinkedIn and another in your desperate, unprofessional email that you sent to another customer, which was highly inappropriate. He was shocked and disgusted as well. When replying to a customer email, one should always keep feelings out of it. That will help to remain professional. This is a little communication skill tip for you. It doesn't matter how emotional a customer gets. Emotions must stay out of the response. Of course, now that you are receiving fallout from your behavior, you're seeing how your behavior in response to complaints can hurt your company, and it has. It will have lasting effects. I didn't make my video in attempts to destroy you. I was so shocked and dismayed that I didn't want my subscribers, many of whom who ordered boxes following many of whom ordered boxes following my positive reviews to end up like I had, unhappy with your company and have it reflect on me as one of those YouTubers who can't post an honest review. This brings me to another point. You made me out as that nasty customer who does nothing but complain. But did you go back to my positive reviews to see how I was raving about your company? No. You implied that I was that difficult customer who no matter what you do, you cannot please but you never really tried to please me. In all the months, hang on, I gotta get a dog out of here. In all the months I was subscribing, I received markers, or a marker, I believe, every month. I, do, I don't have a problem with receiving a black micron to complete a project, that's acceptable, but if you're making yourself a marker subscription company, you should really tell a customer up front. The only time I received anything different was the watercolor month, a graphite set, and charcoal. And, oh, and then last month, gimmicky toy pencils. I'm not a graphite artist, and I learned a lot from graphite and really enjoyed it. I'm a pastel artist as well, so receiving charcoal was really nice. I was surprised and mentioned, I believe, in my watercolor month review that it was odd that a premium box that you placed 
that in a premium box you placed a student quality watercolor. Daniel Smith is artist quality with excellent light fast ratings and pigmentation and also my brand of choice. But to throw in a Cotman watercolor, which is a student brand, I felt was a filler in order to bring your supplies up to that $35 mark without going over. I bet if you search yourself, you will agree. And although many artists, most in the UK, will tell you that they think Winsor & Newton Cotman is a fine brand, it is not premium quality. It is a student grade paint, higher in binder, and Winsor & Newton posts it that way in their description. Even though artists who use it well will tell you that. No, even artists who use it will tell you that, I'm sorry. This is why in my review I pointed out how much more difficult it is to get the pigmentation with that sap green you gave in comparison to the Daniel Smith colors. Cotman is filled with binder. This brings me to my next point. Why did I question whether or not you are an artist? I question it because you don't seem to be aware of what premium artist quality supplies are. Any artist would know this and understand the difference. If you're going to set yourself apart from other companies and offer two choices, basic and premium, and there aren't a lot of companies that do that, then you should stick by it. And if you're having difficulty getting enough premium products into, that, into the premium boxes in order to make the numbers match, meaning that you're going to go over your $35, then maybe it's time to reevaluate your price per box in order to make that happen or for your profit margin. The other reason, which was really a confirmation, is that you don't even mention being an artist in your resume. And I received two, one from LinkedIn and one that was sent in an email to another subscriber. Strange for an artist not to mention that you're an artist. He did mention in his LinkedIn post um, that he has a background in graphic web, no, web design or something for a couple of years. And then he started his own art supply company, but nothing about being an artist or having a degree in, in fine art or anything like that. So his degree isn't in that, and he doesn't claim being an artist, yet he owns an art supply company. So that would have been something that I would think that you would want to include in your resume. But um, So that put up a flag for me also. So as far as mending the customer relationship with me, which he men mentions in his email, I'm not sure that you can. I think the flood of unprofessional behavior and lack of premium art supplies in the premium box has washed out the proverbial bridge. I think that you could have offered a free box or even just sent one along the next month with, with a note of apology or something. But it wasn't even about that. <clears throat> you say in your ampersand, within reason. <clears throat> what does that mean? Is this to say you're willing to do something good? I don't think you're going to send me another box, so maybe you could do something nice for the group I'm sending all my supplies to, all my supplies I don't use to. There is a group called Youth Engaged in New York City, high youth engaged people, um, who contacted me after watching my review on the Copic markers. This is a volunteer youth outreach program who, needed donate, who need donations from people of artists, art supplies for their art program for the teens to do art projects with. They also take monetary donations. They give them artist quality or student artist quality supplies to work with. They can only receive markers or dry media in their program. They cannot receive anything like charcoal, soft pastels, or glitter, anything that can be inhaled into the lungs as it is a violation with the New York Board of Education law. They cannot use paints primarily because this program travels from school to school. Nikki, the volunteer executive director, says that if, if I sent watercolor supplies, it would be something that they would loan the teens that they could take home to work with but they really need the dry media. They are in need of artist quality things like mixed media paper, Bristol paper, graphite, markers, colored pencils, oiled pastels, fine liners, 
watercolor pencils, etc. If you would be willing to make a charitable donation to this group for me, which is something your company could write off as a charitable donation as well, then I will make a video telling everyone in the YouTube sphere that you did this in good faith to make things right for me. And in the future, if I see that your premium boxes are in fact premium artist quality supplies that don't send markers eight times a year or something like that, I don't know if it was eight times a year, I was just picking that number um, in their defense, then I might consider coming back. I'm not a marker artist and I will not become one. So sending this many markers out to me is primarily a marker artist's subscription stating that you send these items in order that artists push themselves outside their medium is fine, but not as often as you're doing it. In the six or seven months, I believe, that I received your subscription, I received paint one time, and it was watercolor. There were only three months I even received a different medium, and that that's about 50% of of my subscription, sending markers, and that's about 50% of the time sending markers to subscribers. I have found another subscription service who in 2016 sent markers only twice. That is Doodle and Sketch. Uh, let me put my finger on this spot. And for the person who commented, I will not like Doodle and Sketch because they send markers too. She was getting really snotty with me and bouncing all around my my channel on all of my videos sending hate mail I finally I finally just stopped it because I was getting so frustrated there had to be at least 15 comments um, all between 1 a.m. and 5 p.m. the following day um, doodle and sketch only sent markers two times in 2016 or 2016 yeah 2016 whatever 2016 they, they sent them two times. The other ten times were different mediums. So, I think I would be happy with that subscription. They assured me that they mix up the different mediums and that I would likely be much happier with them. Every other subscription box was in different media, such as watercolor, pastel, oil painting, acrylic, watercolor pencils, etc., regardless of this month. That had nothing to do with my complaints. Oh, and I'm saying this in regard to Sketchbox. That had nothing to do with the complaints. He, I'm just saying that would I come back in the future? Um, it would have to be premium artist quality art supplies and not be markers more than half the time or half the time even. Come on now, there are so many media out there that you can be choosing. You don't have to do that many markers. Markers are a cop-out, in my, in my opinion. And now that Sketchbox has started their own signature Sketchbox markers, you guys are going to probably be seeing a lot more of those because they're going to need to send them out in order to get people to buy a set. So, um... That's why I brought this up. The only time I ever complained was when receiving semi-dry markers. I should have never said that I don't care for markers because I do have a lot, a lot of markers. I have the full set of Tombows. I have fine liners. I have a huge set of Pro Markers. I have a huge set of Pro Markers Aqua Markers. I have a set of Copics. I have, um, what else do I have? Oh, Spectrum Noir over there, the two big, huge zipper things. I also have uh, Art Spectrum markers. Um, so I have tons of markers. That's not the point. I'm not a marker artist, and I was getting tired of receiving so many of them. But in my complaints to them, I complained one time about dry markers. They were coming semi-dry, meaning I could start out by using them, but after rubbing them a f you know, for a couple seconds, they dried right up. And you know that when you get to the tail end of a marker, that's what happens. And then when they replied to me, they said they tested every marker before it left their hands. I find that really hard to believe, especially if they have, 
you know, thousands and thousands of subscribers. How many markers did this person have to go through testing each one? And if they're just doing one swipe, you wouldn't have known mine were drying out or many other people's, who knows? But um, the implication was that I was lying for some reason. Um, but in saying that I didn't like markers, there were many people on YouTube and with Sketchbox that thought that was my sole reason for complaining, and it was not. And the other time I complained was in receiving those Tritone Kids pencils, hobby pencils, and that was it. So anyway, um, I said, uh, let's see, there were only, th okay, wait a second, I said that. They assured me that they mixed mix up the different mediums and that I would likely be much happier with them. That's Doodle and Sketch. Every other subscription box was in different media. Oh, I read that part too. Um, da, 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 da. I do not have... Oh, okay. I said... This is the kind of subscription I would prefer and what my subscribers would likely prefer, as I do not have a marker YouTube channel, I'm not an illustrator or a manga artist or manga artist, however you say it, but regardless of this, my, they had nothing to do with my complaints. I was considering leaving before I knew I was cut off. That was because I was so tired of receiving the markers month after month. So, if you could promise me in 2017 your lineup of boxes include a fair mix of media, then I might reconsider. But I think you should have done something for me and the customers that canceled for the reasons mentioned in my video, which had nothing to do with how many times I received markers. You do imply on your website... Hang on, I got a page up again. Oh, shoot, I just lost it. Here it is. You do imply on your website, though, that you send multiple media out to people. And I suppose in theory you did. But markers are a cheap and easy way for you to increase your profit margins. Any business person knows this. Especially now that you have started your own marker line. People were complaining on other YouTube channels that the markers came crystallized. I read that in two YouTube channels uh, just this morning. They said they weren't happy. So this isn't just me. Lastly, I was so shocked that you would go so far as to send pieces of my email to other customers and mention my name and try to defend your behavior. Now that I, not that I care about people seeing what I wrote because you were then sucking others into your vortex of unprofessional behavior and they didn't deserve it. Pulling other customers into a concern that does not involve them is just startling to me. But even when it was forwarded on to me, I must say I wasn't too surprised that you would do it. It was childish and not becoming of a business. I hope that you have indeed learned from this experience, and regardless of what a customer says to you or about you or your service in the future, you won't let it show in your response to customers. And again, keep emotions out of your replies to customers. They were used again in your apology email to me. It brings it down a notch, and it actually made me laugh and shake my head when I read it. Um, let's see, now i got a page up again. If you are interested in making a donation to Youth Engaged of New York City, here is the address. I would love to know if you do it and what you sent them. And then I will do a video about it that could help your company. So consider it, please. If that's the one thing that you do for me, I would appreciate that you send them a substantial donation that you can write off or a substantial amount of art supplies that you could write off for the teens in New York City. And I don't gain anything from it except the satisfaction in knowing that Sketchbox did something good for somebody else, even if you wouldn't do it for me. 
I'm sorry to get emotional over this, but if your apology is sincere, Sketchbox, then you will do something nice for these teens youth engaged in New York City. And that would show me that your apology is sincere. Thank you for listening. Bye.